tournament in 2023 here from the Maxio Gymnasium. We got a great game on hand today. We got the number two Brockport Golden Eagles going up against the number three Cortland Red Dragons with Brian DeMiro. Zach Malaha is with me tonight. Zach, this is going to be an unbelievable game. What do you think the key is for Cortland to pull off the upset? I think I have to go to their guy, their star man, Austin Grunder, averaging 22 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, an absolute tank down low, and he can shoot as well. He's an absolute beast. He's going to be the key if Cortland grabs a win against Brockport. Absolutely. And what about for Brockport? How do they avoid being upset tonight? It's going to be their defense. That's the story of the game. Ken Brockport's very strong defense. Story of the game. Ken Brockport's very strong defense hold Cortland and their scorers like Austin Grunder, Kareem Lubin to a minimal allow amount of points. Brockport's defense, one of the best in the Suniac. Very, very strong. Day. Six record. They ended second in the Suniac Conference. As I mentioned, they're coming off a 99-68 to win against Buffalo State. Cortland, on the other hand, they did not get a buy into these semifinals. They had to win on Tuesday night. They beat Geneseo by a large margin, 93-55. to They killed them on a four-game win streak, only one game worse than Brockport. So this should be a very close game. This year, they're one and one against each other. What did you see in those previous matchups that could dictate how this game goes? So the first matchup was 65-63 to in favor of Cortland, actually, in Brockport. Very tough place to play in Brockport, and Cortland managed to get the win. Low scoring, though, as well. That, in that game, means Brockport did well on the defensive side, but just could not get things going offensively. In the opposite game, Brockport put up 86 points in Cortland. If they put up that amount of points, I don't think Cortland will be able to keep up with them. Brockport, a very dangerous team, a lot of weapons on this roster. Absolutely. So the winner of this game is going to go on to face the winner of Oswego State, the number one seed, and the number five seed, New Paltz, coming up right after this one. So this is a 2-3 matchup. Let's get on to the starting lineups for both teams. For Brockport, Tony Arnold guard, as well as Kobe Jordan, Makai Beckett. We got Jahidi Wallace, David Grady the third, and then for Cortland, Isaiah Preston, the captain Austin Grunder, that, as Zach mentioned, along with another captain, Kareem Lubin, Cam Williams, and Aaron Costin rounds out their five. We are just about set to go here. From Max Hill Gymnasium, Brockport and Cortland, get ready to tip. We got a good one, folks. Buckle your seatbelts. Chance at the SUNYAC Championship game is on the line. Costin and Grady to the tip. Cortland controls, going right to left on your screen. Here's Cam Williams. Williams hands off to Preston. Preston dribbles right, dribble handoff, that's Lubin. Lubin finds Grunder on the left wing. This shit back up top and they swing. Preston. They find Costin. Costin dishes. Grunder, pull up three from the left wing. Short won't go. Rebound off of Arnold, and it's going to stay with Cortland. And an early miss for Grunder, but he can shoot from anywhere. Like I said before, he can do anything inside, outside, anything you want. Austin Grunder's got it. Grunder gets it in. It's deflected out of bounds. That was great. He's getting a hand on it. It's going to stay with Cortland. And Brockport just going to try and set the tone defensively really early in this one. Try and make things hard for Cortland. Grunder to inbound it, finds his man, that's Preston on the left wing. Preston with Arnold on him, they're trying to find the post and it's almost stolen. Preston gets it back, kicks out, that's Williams for three. Oh, won't go again, and it's controlled by Grady. And he hands, here's Makai Beckett, their leading scorer, averaging 17 points per game, dribbling into the front court for Brockport. Beckett, this is over to Arnold, and now onto the left side, that's Grady. Bodying in, double team, puts up a shot, won't go, and Grunder gets the rebound, and they're off. Preston hands off to Williams. Williams can't find anything, slows it down. Another deflection, that's a steal. Right there, that's Kobe Johnson up for the layup and the first points of the game. Great defense, as you mentioned. Brockport coming out aggressive on defense. And an early turnover for Portland, not a good sign. Kobe Jordan right on the spot to grab it. Here's Kareem Lubin. He dishes to Preston. Preston to Williams. Williams drives left, passes it out. That's Preston. Isaiah Preston drives left. Gets cut off by Arnold. Another good possession defensively here so far for Brockport. Swing. That's Cam Williams. Short. Rebounded by Brockport, and they're going the other way. Arnold looks up. 
dishes inside and it goes off his teammate's hand. That's off of Grady's hand. It's gonna go the other way. Portland still without a bucket, 0 for 3. Not the start that they wanted, but great defense by Brockport. They're really putting on the pressure, not allowing really anything inside, forcing outside shots for Portland. Williams into the front court, finds Grunder. Grunder's the man, got to get him involved early. There's Williams, and they're looking for Grunder. Good defense there by Jahidi Wallace in the post. Swing, swing. That's Lubin. Lubin loses it, trying to go for a pull-up, and Arl is on the run. Don't have numbers. He still goes. Euro step into the lane. He loses the ball, and is taken away by Cortland. That's Isaiah Preston running the floor. He dishes to Costin. Grunder, nice dish inside. Kareem Lubin drops that block away. Great. That's Grady with a block. Another great defense. We're two and a half minutes here. Cortland doesn't have a bucket. That shot's off by Wallace, but it is rebounded inside. That's Kobe Jordan with a bucket. Nice little floater with the right hand. Jordan with two good plays, taking it to the rim on the first one. A play into the body of a Cortland defender makes the bucket. Isaiah Preston dishes. We got a foul. It's going the other way. Kobe Jordan steps in and takes a charge. This defense by Brockport suffocating Cortland's offense right now. And the bench is absolutely loving it. The energy is completely there for this Brockport side, keeping up this momentum with just under three minutes into this one. Brockport, it's all Brockport right now. Here's Arnold on the left wing. Trying to find his man inside, he does, that's Wallace. Wallace posting up, bodying in, pull up a shot, can't go, rebounded by Grunder. Here's Preston, he finds Costin at the top. Daring him to shoot, he pulls up from the free throw line. Won't go, deflected, it's going the other way. Again, we're over three minutes into the game here, Zach, no points for Cortland. And it's Brockport's defense not allowing Cortland to get anywhere close to the rim. That's where Cortland get a lot of their buckets. They can shoot, but 0 for 3 from three point range. Here's Wallace bodying inside, layup won't go, gets his own miss, still has it. Puts the ball on the floor, drop step, has nowhere to go, good defense. Finds a teammate inside and Grunder denies Co Jordan, but Jordan gets it back, an offensive rebound for Brockport. Here's Tony Arnold, pull up, three pointer. No good, and it's taken away by Costin. Costin on the right wing, hands off to Kareem Lubin. Lubin drives white, cut off, pull up mid range, it's good, their first points. That's Kareem Lubin, he's averaging 13 per game. And if Cortland can make shots, this is a great game. Cortland struggling early, but Kareem Lubin breaks the deadlock there. Here's Beckett, dribble handoff with Arnold. Gets a screen, picks up his dribble. Kobe Jordan, dared to shoot, doesn't take it, passes back to Arnold. Arnold, crossover with Grunder on him, drives into the paint, puts up a shot, nope, he passes it off. That's Grady, Grady puts up a four to shoot. No good, good defense there by Cortland, forcing a tough shot for Brockport. Great defensive possession, and Cortland grabbing some momentum back. Lubin pump fake, Lubin drive and kick. That's Cam Williams, wide open for three. No good. Offensive rebound, though. Reload for Williams. Misses another one. Another offensive rebound. That was Lubin skying in for the rebound. We're going to get a jump ball here. Possession arrow favors Brockport. It's going the other way. So Cam Williams with a couple of opportunities there as Brockport's going to take a timeout. Some opportunities for Cam Williams. If Cortland want to keep up in this game, they have to make open shots. It's very, very important. Brockport can pull away at any point. Their defense having a very, very strong impact so far. Cortland 1 for 8 to start this one. 0 for 5 from three-point range. The rebounding battle is a big key in this one. Tied at 7-7 right now. Yeah, you mentioned it. Cam Williams, two misses there. He's shooting 33% from three on the season, so he can definitely knock him down. Not a shot that Brockport's going to want to let him take, but he just hasn't been able to find it. Neither has really caught at all. Like you mentioned, the defense for Brockport playing unbelievable here to start. Both teams struggling a little bit offensively. And they're shading, Brockport's shading a little bit more towards Austin Grunder. Obviously, the big scorer for Cortland. A little bit of a double team that... Jah Jahadi Wallace is guarding Grunder. He's making it very hard for Grunder to get possession of the ball, and that's helping Brockport get out to a 4-2 lead. 
Yeah, Grunder averaging, like you said, 22 points per game, 11 rebounds, also shooting 37% from the three-point line. So this man can do it all. Here's Arnold. Drives left, finds Beckett, top of the key. They're leading score. Trying to put the moves on Williams. Drive in, left-handed scoop, denied out of bounds. Goes off his head, and it's going the other way. Cortland's bench loving it. Nice defense there by the Red Dragons. And Cortland can play this game. If Brockport want to make it a, a defensive game, Cortland can play with them. Cortland obviously won that game when it was defensive, 65-63 in Brockport. Grunder up top. Gets it to Costin. Costin drive into the lane. Gets fouled. Left hand, no good, but it'll go to the line. Shooting two. It's going to be a foul on David Grady, the third. Going to get our first free throws here with 14.46 to go. Brockport currently with a 4-2 lead on Cortland. And a good take to the rim by Costin, really getting the defense shuffled and gets a trip to the line now. Costin's first shot rims out. Bit of a lid on the rim right now for Cortland, really struggling to start this game. Absolutely. Second free throw is good. So we got a one-point game. Both team starters all still in, just over five minutes played here in the first half. Here's Jordan. Jordan sets it up to Beckett. Beckett looking inside for Jahidi Wallace. He can't find him, passes it back out. That's Arnold. Arnold with a hesitation, drive, scoop, layup, it's denied by Costin. He has got a couple blocks now early on in this game, and the lane is not there right now for Brockport. Corlin doing a great job stacking up inside the twin towers of Grunder and Costin, 6'6 six, six and 6'7. Six, Brockport's not going to get anything easy down low. Devontae Jones, as well as Monte Johnson, into the game for Brockport. Here's Beckett, he drives, he puts up a tough shot in the lane, can't get it to go. Rebounded by Grunder. Grunder driving in on the right wing. Puts a move on his defender and then finds Preston. Grunder calling for it on the right elbow. He does get it. Going to work. Pull up three. Rims out. Rebounded by Williams. Another offensive rebound for Cortland. Here's Costin in the post. One on one. Post fadeaway. That won't go. Grunder's in there, but so is a bunch of the Golden Eagles, and they come away with it. Devontae Jones dribbling up the court. Jones hits Johnson. Johnson looks inside for Grady. Grady, one move into the lane, easy with the right hand. Nice move there by David Grady. And good job by Grady, recognizing no double team, no help defense down low from Cortland. Had an easy layup on Costin. Grunder calling for it. Nice entry pass by Costin. Grunder gets blocked, but they do call a foul. Jahidi Wallace looks like he got the arm or maybe the head of Grunder, he's gonna go to the line with a chance to get his first points of the night at the 13-25 mark of the first half. You said it, Grunder yet to get going, but at any point this man can turn on the Jets and score 10 points in maybe a minute. He's really, really dangerous as he goes to the line. He knocks down the first. Low scoring first half here. I do like how Brockport's guarding Grunder, though, face guarding with Devontae Jones and a little bit of a help shading towards Grunder really makes things difficult for him. Absolutely. He knocks down both free throws, a great free throw shooter, and we're back to a one-point game. Here's Jones into the front court. Drives right, puts on the brakes, takes it back out. Another drive, getting doubled, trying to look for some help. He finds Johnson. Johnson to Beckett, Beckett pull up mid-range. It's short and Grunder comes away with the rebound. They're in transition. Grunder puts the move on his defender, drives left, pump fake. Williams, three-pointer. Not good again, he's 0 for 3 from 3 tonight, but it goes off of Wallace. He could not control the rebound. It's gonna stay with Cortland. And something Greg Dunn's not gonna want from Brockport giving Cortland second opportunities. Cortland currently leading the rebound in battle, 11 to nine. Here's Lubin back up top to Preston with 15 to shoot and they reset. Preston finds Lubin on the right wing. Pass to Williams, he gets a screen left. Nice crossover move and then he passes it four to shoot. Lubin trying to find something, pull up tough shot from the deep mid range, rims out, lit on the basket. As you said, Zach, they can't buy one right now. 
Here's the transition. Wallace dribbling in. Gets double teamed inside. Finds his man. Three-pointer is good. That's Devontae Jones. Nice look for three. First made three-pointer of the night for either side. And Brockport has a 9-5 lead. And Jones is third three-pointer of the season. Knocks it down back. That's Aaron Costin answering right back. High tempo game definitely favors Cortland. Here's Beckett trying to find his. That's Jones. Jones drives left into the lane. Back outside to Johnson. Johnson dribble handoff with Beckett. Beckett passes to Wallace. Good defense here by Cortland. Wallace, tough shot in the lane. Can't go. Another rebound for Grunder. Isaiah pressed it into the front court, getting hounded by Johnson to Lubin. Now here's Aaron Costin. Kareem Lubin drives right. Right hand layup. Won't go. Good defense there by Wallace. And there's, uh, they got a five on four fast break if they hurry. Wallace pulls it back out, puts a move on his defender, drives right, and it's going to be a foul call here. It's going to go against Isaiah Preston, hand check, I believe. Going to get a sub for Cortland. Currently entering the game, number four, number 40. That's going to be Kender, Kendall or Curie. He's going to replace Cam Williams. Brockport underneath in bed. Get it into Beckett. He drives left, puts a move, hesitation into the lane, driving kick. Jones, pump face goes in, gets it over to Wallace. Nice inside pass. Grunder on him. Beckett can't get it to go. He actually got a good look over Grunder, but it just couldn't fall. Getting Beckett involved is really big for Brockport. Obviously, they have a lot of options, but Beckett's right at the top of the list. Yeah, he's still yet to score here almost halfway through this first half. Here's Preston. Preston finds our Curry just into the game. He dishes it back and they swing. Here's Lubin. Lubin gets it into Grunder. Grunder, three eyes on him, post fadeaway. It's a tough shot. Good defense by Brockport, forcing Grunder into some tough shots here in the first half. And forcing Cortland to go deep into the shot clock. That's favoring Brockport in this one. Jahidi Wallace goes in and gets fouled. He's going to go to the line for two. It's a good Euro step by Wallace to get inside. He can have an impact on any game yet to score today, but when he gets going, there's really no stopping him. Fouls on Austin Grunder. It's going to be his first. And Jahidi Wallace is going to head to the line, averaging 13 points per game. Wallace's first free throw rims out. Both teams struggling a little bit from the free throw line. Tony Arnold comes back into the game for Brockport, as well as number five, Jacob Oka, the freshman from Baldwin, New York. Brockport has a ton of depth. They can bring in a bunch of different guys, and a lot of them are played already. Oka down low, Johnson up top. A lot of depth and probably the most depth in the SUNYAC Rockport has. Wallace knocks on the second free throw. We got a 10-8 ball game in favor of the Golden Eagles. Here's Costin dribbling up. He passes to Grunder and they get it off to Danny Linehan just into the game, number 32. Here's our Curie. Grunder trying to get it open, getting absolutely harassed. Here's Lubin in the post. And it's intercepted. That's great defense there by Devontae Jones. They're dribbling in the transition. Jones to Arnold. Arnold, pull up. That's a two-pointer. It's good. Nice fast break there run by the Golden Eagles. And Tony Arnold, too much room for him. He had 25 against Oswego, the top team in the conference last weekend. Very dangerous score. Here's Linehan. Linehan with a nice feed inside. Grunder, right hand over the defense. Great layup and nice setup there by Linehan. And you saw the Brockport bench all say, watch out for Grunder down low. Just one man on him. That's too easy in the middle. Arnold blows right by Linehan for the layup. He's getting going here. Four straight points for Tony Arnold. And the quickness from Tony Arnold to get to the rim. Our carry dribbles with the screen left. Trying to get open. This is great defense here by Brockport. 
feeds the post. It's Costin on the right wing. Dribbles inside, right past Wallace, and he gets the layup to go. Nice move there by Costin. You can see Costin and Grunder, the two big men, that's who uh, Cortland wants to get involved. Really, and, and Brockport did a good job in the first five or ten minutes or so of cutting that out, the impact down low. But Cortland can definitely play a very difficult game if they get opportunities in the paint. Got a foul here going against number 40. It's Kendall R. Curry. It's going to be a side or a underneath out of bounds for Brockport. Tahiti Wallace exits the game and Grady comes back in. His first rest of the night for Wallace. 14 to 12, Brockport currently leading Cortland. Just over half of the first half gone from Maxio Gymnasium in the semifinals, the SUNYAC tournament. Here's Johnson. Johnson finds Arnold on the left wing. Drives left, loses it for a second, gets it back, swings it back to Johnson. That's Johnson. Nice hop step into the lane. Devontae Jones fakes the three. Drives, pull up mid-range. No good. Nice defense again by Cortland. It's rebounded by Kareem Lubin. And here's Grunder into the front court. Grunder over to Lubin. Lubin to Linehan. Swing to the corner. That's our Curry. Costin's open. Nice pass. Grunder gets blocked off the side of the rim. Nice block there by Grady. He just got over there just in time. Grady sets up Arnold. Arnold drives right, pull up mid-range over Grunder. Off the side of the rim, won't go. And Cortland controls. And we're gonna get a timeout here by Cortland. At the 7.53 mark, 14-12, Brockport currently in the lead. But we just saw there that every time Cortland tries to get Grunder the ball, Zach, the Brockport is sending two. And even if it doesn't seem like, even if it seems like he has an open lane like he did there, they have someone coming from the backside to help. And on that last play, Grunder had a layup, just couldn't get full control of it, and it allowed Grady to get up there and block it. The impact down low in the paint is huge for Brockport's defense. They are leading by two right now. Their offense works this way. It, they mainly go half court. They'll get it to guys like Tony Arnold, Kobe Jordan, who could go on the fast break, but they're a half-court type of offense. Cortland, on the other end, will go fast break and try and get it down low to their big man. Yeah, that's what they've definitely been trying to do early on. Despite the low scoring, we've definitely, definitely seen the pace pick up a little bit from the first couple minutes. Definitely, and these two coaches, some legends in the SUNYAC, Greg Dunn for Brockport, Tom Spanbauer for Cortland. A lot of experience in games like this. They know exactly what their team needs to do to come out with a victory. They're both telling their teams right now the, the key to winning this game for Brockport. It's, like I said, the defense on the interior. Slow down Grunder as well as Costin for Cortland. Make it a fast-paced game. That favors them. Absolutely. Yeah, both teams definitely struggling early on. Cortland shooting only 22% from the field. Brockport themselves, so... Both teams struggling a little bit, but we got a good game on hand. Chance to go to the championship game and face, face off either against SUNY Oswego or against New Paltz. That game will be coming up at 7.30 Eastern time after this one finishes. Inbound into the backcourt, here's Linehan. Linehan picks up his dribble, finds Costin. Defense Howden him. Lubin's open top of the key. Bounced off the back iron, won't go, and it's rebounded by Brockport. Lubin had a good look there, wasn't able to knock it down. And Cortland's getting open shots. They just can't really hit right now. Really struggling 22% from the field. Kobe Jordan back into the game for Brockport. Trying to set something up. Dribbles right, loses it, and it's stolen away. That's our Curry. Our Curry leaves it for Lubin. Lubin to Linehan. Linehan drives it back. That's Costin now. Costin pull up three. Won't go, that's way off. Nice rebound by Johnson. Johnson finds Kobe. That's Kobe Jordan. Jordan inside, Jacob Oka, he can't get it to go. And it's another nice defensive play by Cortland. Here's Lubin running up. High stepping, driving in, and he gets called for the charge. That's the second time we've seen a charge here for Cortland. That time, it was Jacob Oka who took the contact, and it's going the other way. Brockport, a very, very tough team inside. 
said it multiple times to start this one. It's only 14 to 12, 6.50 to go in the first half. Very low scoring. Both teams really struggling. It's going to become a defensive game. Who's better on the defensive side? They will win today's matchup. Riley McK McKevy in for Corton. He replaces Kareem Lubin. Here's Grady on the top of the key. Setting up Beckett. We're going to get an offensive foul here. Illegal screen called on number one, Colby Jordan. It's going to go the other way. So after Brockport gets a turnover, they, they commit one right back. And six to four, Cortland in turnovers. Both teams turning over the ball early. They got to cut that out, especially in big, big games like this. Here's Grunder with Kobe Jordan on him. That's our Curry driving left, pull up. Left-handed stroke is no good. And here's Jahidi Wallace back into the game for Brockport. Nice move, gets called. We're gonna get an offensive foul. Another one, these teams both trying to get their get the transition game going and a lot of charges being called early on. And Brockport not known as a transition type of team, more of a half guard offense. They can get down the court, but Cortland did a great job of getting back on defense. That's leading to these charges down low. Tyler Cowie into the game for Brockport. Here's Aaron Costin. He hands off to Linehan. Linehan trying to look inside. Eventually just does find his teammate, but he overthrows it. You know, he had Costin there open, just was put too much on the pass. Yeah, and Cortland's really struggling. Really not on the same page too much. A lot of bad shots from the outside that are not going in. One for nine from three-point range. Got to get things going down low. Find ways to get Austin Grunder the ball. Beckett pull up three. Puts it in. Nice shot. That's Makai Beckett, his first points of the night and Brockport is out to a five-point lead. What a move by Beckett to get around our Curry. Wide open three. Top of the key, that's Linehan. Linehan pass to McKevy. McKevy to Costin. Costin swing to the outside. Three-pointers no good. That was our Curry with the shot, but an offensive rebound by Linehan. Back to our Curry. Our Curry to, to Grunder. He misses that shot and it's rebounded by Brockport, a good look there for Grunder, just wasn't able to put it in. And he had the room in front of him, surprised he didn't take it into the lane, it was a two on one down low. Nice pass inside by Arnold, gonna get a double dribble called. It's an interesting call, don't see many of those these days, but that is a double dribble called on Grady. Turnovers really starting to add up, 7-6 Cortland right now. And turnovers are not the key to win these type of games. Here's Linehan, Linehan inside. Now where to go, Linehan, three-pointer from the left wing, that's off. Cortland is struggling a lot from three-pointer right now. They cannot find the basket. They are one of 11 from three. Here's Beckett, nice move. Beckett inside, puts it up, doesn't get it to go. We're gonna get a fallow going against Cortland and Beckett's gonna head to the line. Almost got the and one to fall. And a good play by Beckett. Brockport's defense right now, not a lot of pressure on the three-point line. They'll let Cortland shoot that. Cortland's struggling mightily right now from three-point range. A solid three-point shooting team, about 36% on the year. Not bad for a Suniac team, but really struggling so far. Beckett's first free throw hits back iron, no good. It's the game for Cortland. We got number 34, Timu Tumahoff. He's actually a grad student right now from Finland. Don't see that very often. Number 34 for Cortland. That's pretty awesome. He's a big body down low. A lot of size on him, and he's taking the place of Costin. Yeah, Costin gets a break here. Grunder yet to sit. He's been in for the first 15 plus minutes of this one. 18 12, Brockport ahead. Here's our Curry dribbling into the front court. He finds Linehan. Linehan dishes to Tumanoff. Tumanoff to our Curry. Pull up three. Won't go. Another miss for three. And Cali with the rebound. Here's Colby Jordan into the front court. Pushing pace. Tony Arnold. Puts a move on his defender. Drives left into the lane. Floater is good. Nice move. Tony Arnold right into the lane for the layup. And a tough layup going to the left side, but was able to get it back. And Brockport all of a sudden out to an eight point lead. Grunder drove in. No shot. Gonna say he got 
fouled outside of the paint with the reach in. And it's gonna be Cortland's ball underneath. It's the second on Colby Jordan, but this is when Brockport's depth comes in handy. Here's Grunder in the left corner. Finds Linehan. Linehan looking for somewhere to go. He's got nothing. Brockport's defense has been suffocating early on. Linehan drives left hand. Nice move. What a nice, tough layup with the left. Into the lane, and Arnold had no chance when it got 1v1. Great move by Linehan. Here's Beckett gets a screen from Grady. Beckett with the big on him. Tries to put on the move. Hits Grady. Grady one on one in the post. Drives right, and he throws it out of bounds. I think he was about to get called for a travel there. He had to give up the ball, and he threw it out into the Cortland bench. And good defense by Cortland with Costin not in the game. Tumanoff and Grunder down low. Great defense there by the Red Dragons. But the big story right now in this first half, 335 to go, is the four on the scoreboard in points for Austin Grunder. Great defense by, by Brockport, and Grunder hasn't gotten going yet. Here's Tumanoff. This is... Char Curry back to Tumen off top of the key looks finds his man three pointers no good that was shot by McKevy can't get it to go and then another this is like the fourth time we've seen another defensive rebound opportunity go out of bounds off of Brockport and they can't control it giving Cortland another opportunity and that's going to be something Greg Dunn's going to talk about going into halftime too many second opportunities you give Cortland too many of those they'll cut the deficit it's only six right now here's Grunder to inbound it he eventually finds his man into the corner to Linehan. Linehan swings to the corner. That's Tumanoff, three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by Grunder. What a board. Puts it up and one. Big man inside. There he is. You can't hold him down for long. And one. That's Austin Grunder going to the line for a chance at three. And defensive rebounding. Brockport would have been talking about that all week long. Stop Austin Grunder. No offensive rebounds. A great play by Grunder, and he gets an N1 opportunity looking to get going in this one. Linehan takes a seat. Cam Williams back into the game for Cortland. So Austin Grunder at the line, got six points on the night, looking to make it a one possession game with this free throw. That's good, he's three of three from the line, and Cortland just like that, right back within three. Tony Arnold controlling for Brockport. He's got six points tonight to lead his team. Drives right. Nice pass inside. Grady, right hand to lay a beautiful pick and roll. Executed to perfection there by Brockport. And a great pass by Tony Arnold. Really got it inside to Grady. Brockport out to a five-point lead. Brockport into a bit of a 2-3 zone here defensively. Pass inside, Grunder again gets blocked away by Grady. Nice defense by Brockport, and they're off in transition. Here's Tony Arnold. Arnold, hesitation, crossover, layup in the lane. He, oh, it rims out. He gets his own miss, though. Almost fell down. Finds Cowie in the corner. Cowie, step back three. No good. Tip back, it's gonna be an over the back foul. It's gonna go against Zachary Rice, the freshman, and it's gonna go the other way with Cortland. That layup was almost good by Arnold. It would have been a beautiful finish. Very unlucky from Tony Arnold. He's had a, a solid impact for Brockport so far. Six points, leading the team in points. Just couldn't get it to go. Then he had a no-look pass that was really, really cool. Out to Tyler Cowie, couldn't hit the three. And then, of course, the foul, Cortland going to the line. Yeah, Brockport's in the bonus, so Cortland will be shooting the last 214 of this first half. At the line. It's Riley McKevy. One and one, he misses it. It's going to go back to, uh, uh, to Brockport, excuse me, with that was Grady with the rebound. Tony Arnold. Pick and roll with the and threw it away. Intercepted by McKevy. Tough pass there by Arnold in no man's land. Here's Cortland with a chance to cut it to one possession again. McKevy to Tumanov. Tumanoff to Cam Williams. Cam Williams dribbling. Nice defense here 
by Brockport. Williams, that's McKevy. Three-pointer, wide open look. Won't go. Another miss from three. They are one of 15 from three in the first half. That has got to be a point of emphasis for them at halftime. They get better shooting numbers because if they even make a couple of those threes, Zach, they're probably winning in this game. Very low scoring first half. 22 to 17. Not what either team really expected. Beckett pull up three. Won't go. It's rebounded by Williams. Here's Grunder. Still yet to have taken a seat in this first half. He's played every minute. Here's McKevy back to Williams. Swing, swing to the corner. That's Tuminoff. Tuminoff looks inside. Finds our, our Curry. Our Curry to Tuminoff. Tuminoff, three-pointer from the right wing. Another miss. Rebounded by Williams. Back to McKevy. McKevy's three. Won't go again. Two more misses from three. This is unbelievable. An utterly tragic shooting performance from three-point range for Cortland in this first half. And you would think at some point Cortland would try and get away from that. They're really struggling. Three-pointers not working. Might take the game plan of shooting till it finally goes, but they're better off trying to get it down low and find place for Grunder. Here's Arnold with a big on him. Arnold, hesitation, drives inside, gets bumped, no foul, gets his own rebound. Puts it up again, blocked away by Tumanoff. Nice hands. Here's Grunder running the break. Grunder into the lane, hop step, layup, won't go, no foul. Rebounded by Zachary Rice and up into the front court by Arnold. They're going to hold for one here with 25 seconds and the shot clock turn off. Referee is letting these guys play. Arnold got fouled, wasn't called. Grunder then frustrated on the other end. Here's Arnold with 10 to play in the first half. Arnold gets a screen from Grady. Arnold on the right wing. Hesitation. In and out. Looking for someone. Finds Grady. Grady with one. Puts up a three. Oh, just short. We got a very, very tight but low scoring game here at halftime, folks. Brockport Golden Eagles leading the Cortland Red Dragons 22 to 17. Your leading scorers for each team. Austin Grunder is leading Cortland with seven points, only shooting two of eight, though. And for Brockport, it's Tony Arnold and David Grady with six points apiece. But the story of this first half got to be the three-point shooting for Cortland. One of 14 from three, and that's not going to get it done. If they want any chance in this one, they're going to have to improve that scoring and those three-pointers. Yeah, that's the story right now. Cortland struggles from three-point range. One for 15 in the half and six for 30 from the field. They gotta pick that up. Brockport's really not doing too much on offense. Cortland's just not doing too much on offense and it's helping Brockport out to a five point lead. Brockport on the other hand on offense needs to get their stars going. Arnold, Wallace, Beckett, not a lot of either, any of them with Arnold with six and Beckett with four, Wallace with none in that, or, or one, excuse me, in that first half. Need to get their guys going. A sluggish first half from both teams. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another thing, despite Cortland's tough shooting performance, only down by five. So if you're Cortland right now going into the locker room, obviously you want to shoot the ball better. And I think you mentioned earlier you're wanting to maybe drive a little bit, maybe drive and kick. What are you saying if you're Coach uh, Thomas Bambauer right now for Cortland? See, this is an easy one now because it's a five-point game. Cortland, you just tell your guys, Tom Spanbauer will tell his guys, just forget about that first half. Let it go and go play the second half. You're in this one. It's a close game. Just go play a normal half, and they could come out with a victory. And what about for Brockport here? You know, they are up by five, but again, despite the struggles from Cortland, it's only a five-point lead. Do you think that maybe they wish they could have capitalized on that poor shooting in the first half more? I definitely think they could have. 34% from the field. They are shooting 50% from three. Not a three-point shooting team. They definitely go to their guys down low and, and use their quickness inside. It's very, very good from Brockport and a great way to extend the lead in this one. For sure. Yeah, as you mentioned, only four three-point attempts for Brockport they do shoot it 31% so it's a respectable percentage for as a team but that is definitely not their game rebounding is close you know 22 to 19 in favor of Brockport you saw a lot of second chance opportunities though for Cortland if Brockport could just control some of these defensive rebounds that could maybe translate to them getting to bigger leads yeah Brockport's defense has been very strong Grunder with only seven points to start this one it's been a struggle for Cortland on offense Credit to Brockport's defense, though. 
Absolutely. Brockport's defense was suffocating in that first half for the majority of it, making tough, making it tough for Grunder and the rest of their team to get open looks. So for halftime right now, we got Brockport 22, Cortland 17. We'll be back in just about 13 minutes for the start of the second half.
Casey, and we got a tight matchup with Brockport and Cortland. Brockport currently on a five-point lead. Story of the first half, Cortland shooting absolutely abysmal. One of 14 from three, six of 30 from the floor. With Zach Malahood, I'm Brian DeMiro. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got a good one. The winner of this game is going on to face Oswego State or New Paltz tomorrow in the championship game. Zach, what are some keys to second half for Cortland to try and get back in this one? So Cortland's biggest key is getting Austin Grunder involved. He only had seven points. That's actually a lot. It was more of the second half of the first half that Grunder got going. But getting him more involved, getting the offense rolling, really struggling, only 17 points on the board. Close to a season low in the first half for Cortland. And if they get Grunder involved, it will definitely be a better game. Absolutely. Definitely want to get him involved. He's our leading scorer. He's averaging a double-double on the season, 22 points per game to go along with 11 rebounds. Got to continue to feed the big man. What about for Brockport? They got a five-point lead, but I think they wish and they know that it could be more. The offense is what's struggling for both teams. Brockport needs to get their stars involved. Arnold, Beckett, Wallace. Wallace with only one point. Arnold with six and Beckett with four. Getting those guys involved is definitely a key to Brockport extending this lead. Their defense has been perfect so far. They've come in with a game plan. They've locked down Austin Grunder, and that's given them a five-point cushion at halftime. Absolutely. Well said, Zach. And we're going to the second half here momentarily about to start. Defense for Brockport has been absolutely unbelievable to begin this game. And here we go, just about set to start the second half from Maxio Gymnasium. A chance and a trip to the SUNYAC Championship on the line. Cortland's going to start with the ball. They're going to inbound going left to right on your screen. Kareem Lubin gets it into Isaiah Preston, and the second half is underway. Preston to Cam Williams with the handoff. Here's Kareem Lubin. Lubin swing pass to Preston. Preston looks inside. That's Costin. Aaron Costin gets double team, picks up his dribble, looking for a man. Nice no-look feed inside to Cam Williams. Beautiful pass by Aaron Costin. And the impact of the big man, Austin Grunder and Aaron Costin. Great pass by Costin to find Williams. Here's Beckett, hands it off, gets it back. Beckett, pull up midi. Rims out, rebounded by Costin. They're off. Here's Cam Williams dribbling up the right side of the court. Cam Williams finds Preston. Preston inside to Costin. Costin backing down his man. Drop step. Goes to the left. Up and in. Nice move. Getting the big men involved early. Four early points for Cortland. And Costin having an impact. An assist and a bucket. It's a one-point game now. Here's Kobe Jordan. Jordan hands off to Tony Arnold. Leading Brockport in scoring. That's Jahadi Wallace. Three-pointer is good. Jahadi Wallace gets himself on the board. That's only one point in the first half. You mentioned it. Three points early to see one go down. That could be big for him. It's a great sign for Brockport when Wallace gets going. An open three, and he takes it very easily. Here's Preston. Preston hands it off to Williams, and here's Kareem Lubin on the right side. Grunder with his first touch of the second half. Swing to the corner. Williams is open. He stepped on the out-of-bounds line. It's going to go the other way. Another forced turnover here by Brockport. Brockport's defense doing a great job making Cortland get inside. They'll let them shoot from the outside. One for 14 in the first half, like we mentioned. Letting them shoot, they have to get on the inside. They did that early, Cortland, in the second half. They got to get back to it. Here's Tony Arnold on the right side, looking inside. Wallace with a nice catch with one hand. In the post, makes a move, goes inside over two defenders, can't get it to go. Offensive rebound by Jordan, passes it back out, and they reset. Here's Arnold, pull up mid-range, puts it in. Nice shot there by Tony Arnold from a long two-pointer to extend Brockport's lead. A good job by Arnold taking the open space in front of him. Here's Preston dribbling to the corner, gets inside to Grunder. Grunder back outside, Preston's open, gives up the look. Swing, swing, Cam Williams. That three-pointer, no good. Grunder with an offensive rebound, poked away, taken by Tony Arnold. Nice defense there by Brockport to come away with that, that loose ball. Arnold, hesitation, drives all the way around. Here's Kobe Jordan, back to Wallace. Wallace pulls it back. Three-pointer, knocks it down. That's Jahadi Wallace, his second three-pointer of the half. He's getting going, and... Brockport is out to a nine-point lead. Just too much room for Wallace. Second three of the half. 
and Brockport are rolling right now. Nice pass inside. Oh, we had open lane, but there's Costin goes up. Can't get it to go. Rebounded. Another poke out. That's the second time in this half that Arnold has poked the ball loose underneath from a big man after a rebound. And a trap down low from Brockport. Basically a triple team in the paint. Here's Jihadi Wallace. He gets reached, and it's going to be called with a foul. That's going to be on Cam Williams. Brockport extending their lead to nine here in the second half with 16.51 to play. Cortland needs to find answers on offense. Kendall R. Curry in the game for Cortland. Here's Wallace. Swings it back to Arnold. Nice pass inside. What a beautifully set play. And Grady throws it down. What an awesome play there by Brockport and a great pass by Arnold. And we got a timeout by Cortland. Momentum is all with Brockport right now. They're feeling it. Their fans are into it, and their bench loves it. They got a double-digit lead. And it's all their work on offense that's really helping them out. Of course, a couple of steals on defense to help out, but the offense is rolling right now. A couple open threes from Wallace. Great play by Tony Arnold. Then he, a great pass by Arnold down low, finds a wide-open Grady, and all of a sudden, an 11-point lead for the Golden Eagles. Doesn't look like Cortland has any chance of stopping them right now. Yeah, and as you mentioned, getting Wallace involved was a focal point for Brockport. He had two early threes, and then we saw on that last play, he's coming off the screen. Two guys go to him, and they leave Grady wide open inside, and it's up to the point guard to make the right pass, and Arnold did. And Cortland needs to figure that out on the defensive side. They did a good job of that in the first half. I think more of that first half was Brockport and their star players weren't really wanting the ball. It would come to them. They would maybe get a shot up. Beckett struggled in the first half, one for six, but the rest of the guys really didn't put the ball up too much. Wallace finally gets things going, and all of a sudden it's helping Brockport extend their lead. So what does Cortland have to do right now? They're obviously trying to weather this storm. They've given up a nice run here by Brockport to start the second half. How do they climb back in this game? Well, their communication needs to be better on the defensive side. Too many easy looks for Brockport to start the half, but they also need to find answers on offense. They haven't really found too many guys besides Grunder in this season that can get to the bucket, but now they need to look for somebody else to help them out while Grunder is being double teamed. Lubin trying to get it in. He finally does to Preston. Here's Preston with Arnold on him. Preston is stolen away. Nice takeaway by Grady, but he falls down. Had a wide open lane. He falls down, slips on the court. That was almost going to be another easy fast break bucket. Great defense here by Brockport. Cortland is in a box. They really are. And Grady was, as well as Greg Dunn, very animated, looking for a foul. Wasn't called. And Greg Dunn still animated on the Brockport sideline, but all the momentum on Brockport's side, the bench is loving it. A little full court press action. Arnold harassing Isaiah Preston. Here's Costin. Cortland needs to get some buckets and they need it quick to stop this run. Here's their best man, Grunder, and he loses it. Taken away. Here's Jordan. Up the floor. Up for the layup. No good, but a foul. Cortland can't believe it. They didn't think that was a foul, but it's going to be called on Grunder. And Kobe Jordan is going to head to the line for two free throws. There's not a lot of noise in Maxville except for the Brockport bench. They are loving what their team's doing right now. Arnold goes to the line to try and extend the lead, but Cortland, a bunch of turnovers on offense, very uncharacteristic from the Red Dragons. Jordan makes the first. Brockport's out to a 12-point lead. Kobe Jordan, second shot is good. Two for two at the line, and they're right back into the full court press. Tony Arnold all over Isaiah Preston, trying to make him as uncomfortable as possible. Preston drives right, hand off. That's our Curry to Costin. Costin trying to find Grunder. He gets hacked. That's going to be a foul on Kobe Jordan. We got some extra here as Grunder and Jordan get into it. The benches are being told to stay put. You don't want a technical foul here. We got some chippiness going on. Tony Arnold clapping his hands. Grunder and 
Jordan got tangled up there after the play. We'll see what the refs want to do, if they're going to call any technical fouls or if they're just going to let it go. Grunder didn't like the way he was being held by Jordan. Jordan then stepped over him, and that's what started the little... There was a bit of a scuffle, scuffle yeah. between the two of them. And I believe it was Arnold that ended up stepping over Grunder, and Grunder did not like that. said, get off me. It's a 13-point Brockport lead, and they're going to play a little bit chippy, but they don't want to get caught with a technical foul. They have all the momentum on their side, can't get, in, can't get involved in that little stuff. But Cortland have found nothing right now. All the momentum on Brockport's side. The players on the court clapping right now. They know it, and Cortland's looking for answers. Yeah, the defense for Brockport in the second half has just been absolutely suffocating. They've got nowhere to go, uh, Cortland does, and they got to keep that up for Brockport. But for Cortland, you got to try to get Grunder into some better positioning. They're trying to get him the ball at the high post, top of the key. He's getting hounded every single time, even double teamed a little bit. Where can they look to get him more looks? Is it the post, or you got to br make him bring the ball up? Like, what do you do if you're Cortland? So I believe a high post or maybe even two low posts would definitely work. We saw a couple of plays where Aaron Costin was able to get it into the paint and, and either dish or find a bucket. I think for Grunder, it's mostly going to come from the outside. He's got to start hitting shots from the outside. He can do that. I think the key for Cortland's star man is, is get things going from really anywhere on the court because inside is, is very, very tough to get there right now. Yeah, he's just got to see one go in and then get him going. We've sorted it all out. It's going to be a tech. Tech. Yeah, we're going to get a technical foul here on Kobe Jordan. And Grunder's going to head to the line. This could be a momentum shifter here if you're Cortland. Grunder, a great free throw shooter. He's 3 of 3 on the night from the line. Tried to climb back into this one. He knocks down the first. Grunder's up to 8 points on the night. The second technical free throw is also good. Puts him at nine. And the lead is now 11 for Brockport. So that's Kobe Jordan with a technical foul, I believe that was called. So you definitely need something to check out. Keep in mind, tensions are high here. Tony Arnold's going to take a seat. It's going to be Monte Johnson, the sophomore, replacing him. Our Curry to inbound, he finds Preston. Preston at the top of the key. There's Grunder. They get him the ball early in this possession on the outside. Got Jordan on him. Nice matchup. Dribble handoff. Our Curry pull up on the left elbow. Puts it in. Nice shot there by our Curry, and the lead is down to nine. And all of a sudden, Cortland grabbing some momentum. A big shot by our Curry. Here's Johnson. Johnson looks for a teammate. He ends up finding Wallace Wallace one on one in the corner with Costin in and out move drives in dish no look pass almost lost it and it's actually taken away in that corner nice defense there by Cortland a little bit sloppy for Brockport here's Preston Preston swings it to Lubin Lubin inside to Costin this is a nice mismatch but he passes it out Preston for three no good. Struggles for three continue for Cortland. They got to get a couple of these to go down if they want a chance to come back in this game. They definitely do. And as Brockport takes the timeout, that was a great play. I'm talking about Costin going down low in the low post. He can pass. He can try and make a post move. That's a good play for Cortland. They need to do that more often to get back in this. And one. he's been their main guy this game. You know, Grunder's struggling. Obviously, he's got the nine points, but Costin's got four, eight of his own. He is the guy who's been generating a lot of offense for Cortland, they definitely need to try and continue to get him the ball. They definitely do, and and Costin is taking some of the attention away from Grunder. Grunders obviously have a has a double team on him. Just David Grady on Costin down low. He can make a move and get around Grady. Grady is a good defender, but Costin's very very big, six seven, down low, and like I said, he can pass. He has the vision to get it to his shooters. Absolutely. 
we got a nine-point game, just about five minutes gone here in this second half. The winner of this game will take on Oswego and New Paltz. One, whoever wins that game coming up right after this one at 7.30 p.m. But, you know, Brockport, after their game against Oswego last week, they lost by six. They said a lot of their players said that they want a chance at revenge against Oswego. Oswego's on a 19-game winning streak, the number one seed in this tournament. They're top ten in the country in Division Three. There's a good chance that they're going to be advancing, and if Brockport can hold this off, they'll get that rematch they wanted. That can set up an unbelievable championship game tomorrow night. It definitely can, and a lot of games still left as well as Oswego's game to go, but if Brockport and Oswego do meet in the final, number one and two in the SUNYAC should be an absolute dandy at Max Zeal. And the two of us will be with you tomorrow afternoon, a 4 p.m. start for that championship game. Zach and I will be back on the call to see which team is going to take home the SUNYAC championship. Here's Kobe Jordan at the top of the key. Given room, passes over to Wallace. Wallace, pull up three-pointer. No good, it's rebounded by Grunder. Grender nearing double-double here. He's got nine points and eight rebounds. Here's Costin. Costin tries to find his man. Drives in. Tough fadeaway. No good. And it's rebounded inside by Jihadi Wallace. Wallace up to Beckett. It's a two-on-two fast break. Beckett drives right up. Layup. It's good. And the foul. Makai Beckett gets to the line. And he's got a chance for three after the and one. What a move by Makai Beckett. Up to six points on the night. And he read the fast break perfectly. Saw a 1v1 with Aaron Costin. Used his quickness, the long legs of Makai Beckett. Allows him to get to the rim. Definitely a foul and an and one for Makai Beckett. Free throw is also good. Completes the three-point play. Brockport back up by 12. Every time Cortland has kind of got it under 10, Brockport's come right back and brought it above, above 10 back to double digits. Got to try to find something. His Preston goes in. No shot. It's going to be a foul on the floor against. That's Monte Johnson. They're calling it on for the hand check. Yeah, no help defense down low from Brockport. Put Johnson in a hard place. Had to grab a tug of Preston. Cortland still looking to try and get Grunder or Costin going. Here's Grunder, left wing, tough three. That's an air ball, nothing there for Grunder. Forced into a tough shot, and Brockport's running. Here's Wallace. Wallace up the court, dribbles in, takes it into his man. He got a foul. It's going to be a block on Costin. Might have had his feet in the restricted area there. That's why they caught it, because he did have position, but the feet in the restricted area going to get the blocking call. It's a huge foul on Costin. That's going to be his third, and... That's not what Cortland is looking for. They need those two guys down low, Costin and Grunder, if they want any chance to get back into this one. Yeah, still a lot of game left to play and only one more foul to work with, really, before he's in danger. Jihadi Wallace knocks down his free throw, extends the lead to 13. Second free throw is also good. He's up to nine points for the Golden Eagles. Again, this full court pressure all day for Brockport has been giving Cortland some trouble. Here's Preston. They're trying to find any sort of answers on offense. Our Curry dribbles. Nothing. They got absolutely no nowhere to go right now. Here's Lubin. He gets it in to Costin, who's double teamed. Nice swing to the corner. Our Curry step back, trying to find Grunder, and he's foul underneath. David Gray, you know, Grunder is great at getting his positioning and fighting around the defense, and he's drawing fouls here in the second half. And no complaints at all from Grady. He knew exactly that he stepped in the way of Grunder. Grunder got the contact and got the foul call. Costin has it now, finds Lubin. Lubin on the right elbow with Wallace on him. Lubin, dribble, one dribble and a pull-up. No good, rebounded. There by Grady. Another one and done for Cortland. Here's Beckett putting on the moves. Beckett pull up. Three-pointer. Short. Rebounded by Costin. Cortland looking to run. They don't have numbers, but they are still running. Here's the dr driving left. Our Curry. Corner three. No good. Another miss for three. This is unbelievable. This is a team that shoots over 30% from three, and they have made one three-pointer. They are one of 21 from three right now. 
Here's Wallace inside with the right hand. No good. It's rebounded by Wallace on the ground. Awkward timing, and he's blocked. We got a foul. That was weird. The ball kind of fell into Wallace's lap on the ground, and he passed it over to Kobe Jordan, who then ended up getting fouled by Kareem Lubin. He'll go to the line for two. And Cortland can't find anything on offense. You said it, Brian. One for 21 from deep. And that's not a recipe for success. Kobe Jordan's first free throw was good. You know, it reminds me of that game the Houston Rockets played a couple years ago the, to go to the championship. It was game seven. For those of you out there that remember that game, they shot like something like maybe 7, 10, 15% from three. And that's what we're kind of seeing here. Uh, Cortland just lit on the basket, can't buy a three. And in these big moments with a chance to send him to the championship game, they're, they've gone cold. And, and give credit to Brockport's defense for letting Cortland shoot those threes, knowing the game plan, not letting too much gut down to the rim inside. Here's Cam Williams back into the game. Finds Costin. Costin open for the mid-range. Back iron won't go. Good look there for Costin. He can't get it to go, though. This is dangerous territory for Cortland. They're down 15, 12 and a half to play. You cannot let this game get too far to reach. And the jumpers are all off from anywhere on the court. Beckett, oh, what a pretty move. Goes to the reverse layup, switches hands midair, and gets to go with the right. Pretty move from Makai Beckett. We're going to get a timeout by Cortland. Down by 17. Their coach wants a timeout after that beautiful move by Beckett. And with all the momentum right now is with the Golden Eagles. It's, Bro it's Brockport. All day long, 20 to 8 in the second half, really dominating and just can't find anything for Cortland. They're trying to go consistently from three point range, one for 21, but they really can't hit from anywhere. They're trying, their best recipe for success is getting down low, but Brockport's defense with Grady as well as Jordan. Jordan's actually having a double team on Grunder. Jordan's helping out the quickness. I, I'm sure Greg Dunn saw that before the game and said, I want that guy on him. Of course, the two fouls on Jordan staying out of foul trouble, that's the recipe for success on defense for Brockport. Absolutely. And another thing is, coming into this game, both teams, we talked about turning the ball over. You want to limit your turnovers. Turnover battle is even right now. They both have 11 each, but the points off turnovers is what I want to highlight. Cortland has three points only off of their 11 turnovers that they've forced. Brockport has also forced 11 turnovers. They got 14 points off those turnovers, which is arguably the story of the game, aside from the three-point shooting. You said and not making the most of their opportunities, as Brockport's done a great job of that. Out to a 17-point lead all of a sudden. It was a five-point lead at halftime, and it's just been all Brockport to start this second half. Yeah, Cortland's got to find something here if they want to stay in this game. Our Curry has it one step in from the half-court line. Our Curry almost loses it, trying to find Grunder. Can't get it to him. Getting harassed there by, that was... That was uh, Monte Johnson with the defense. Kareem Lubin on the right wing. Lubin, dribble, free throw line pull up. Tough shot, he's fouled though. I think that was one of those where I think Coach Jordan was in his landing space a little bit. Great defense, just didn't give him room to land. It's gonna go to the line for two. Then Jordan was frustrated about it. It's his third foul with still 11.48 to go. But yeah, did not give Lubin any room to land. But that's what Brockport is looking for. They're looking for those outside shots, those mid-range shots. Let Cortland shoot. Don't let him near the inside. It's going to be hard for Cortland with that game plan to get back into this one. Lubin's first free throw bounces in. Jordan does take a seat, replaced by number 10, Devontae Jones. A senior guard out of Troy, New York. Here's Lubin, his second free throw. Knocks it down. Here's Monte Jones, or excuse me, Devontae Jones. Here's Jones, top of the key. Swings it over to Johnson. Johnson driving kick. Back out to Jones. Jones driving left. Finds Beckett. Beckett inside to Grady. Grady, pump fake from the mid-range. Nowhere to go. Picks up his dribble. 
Here's Johnson. Johnson, spin, move into the lane, loses the ball. A little bit out of control there. Nice defense by Cortland, and Cam Williams controls. Here's Lubin on the right wing. Gets a screen from Costin. Lubin with the big switch onto him. Behind the back, drives left, step back, pull up midi. It's good. Nice shot there, Kareem Lubin. We got 11 minutes to go. It's a 13-point game. Cortland trying to find something here with the 2-3 zone. Tough jumper by Kareem Lubin on the other end, though. Here's Jahadi Wallace inside. Gets blocked away by Williams. Gets his own miss. Goes up again and gets it to go. That's a nice, that's a big man move in there by Jahadi Wallace. And Wallace knew it right away. Great move to get into the body of a Cortland defender. Easy layup at the rim. Here's Costin. Costin backing down Grady. Costin goes into him. Passes out. Williams trying to find one. Can't get it to go. He's 0 of 7 from 3 in this game. And it's going to go back to Brockport. Arnold back into the game. He replaces Monte Johnson. Here's Devontae Jones. Dribbling into the front court. Finds Beckett. Nice ball movement here. Trying to find an opening in the zone. There's Wallace. Wallace goes into the paint. Hop step. Layup. Is good. And one. Another one for Jahadi Wallace. It's his half right now, Zach. He's all over the place. Getting buckets for Brockport. Taking over Jahadi Wallace. What a move inside. Gets into the body of Costin. Fourth foul on the Cortland big man. And Wallace, like you said, Brian, has taken over this game out to a 17-point lead with 10-15 to go. And that puts Coach Tom Spambauer in a tough spot here because you really can't take him out of the game because you're down by 17 points right now. You need him in the game if you have a chance, but one more and he's out. you got to play it out. Lubin inside, right hand gets fouled. D Coach Dunn didn't like it, neither did Grady, but he would got hit, did Lubin, and he'll be going to the line for two. Lubin has been the only form of offense here for Cortland in the second half. Grunder has really been held in check. He's 2 of 10 on the night, and so it's been a struggle for him. And Lubin, the second score for Cortland this season, averaging 13.4 points per game behind Grunder's 22. And Lubin can't hit that free throw. Not the time to be missing free throws. If you're Cortland, you need every point you can get. Still a 17-point deficit with halfway, or just about halfway to go here in this game. Second free throw was good. 10.08 to go. to 16-point game. And Brockport are just going to let their offense run in the half court. Still a lot of time left, but slow the game down. Monte Jones, wide open three. Devontae Jones, excuse me, and he misses way off. Here's Grunder in fast break. Lubin, wing, three-pointer. Knocks it down. Kareem Lubin, another one. He's starting to fill it up. It's a 13-point game. And finally, a three-pointer goes, and the bench likes it for Cortland. Still believing here at Zeal. Tony Arnold into the lane, right hand, can't get it to go, rebounded and put back up by David Grady. Nice offensive board, another second chance opportunity for Brockport and they capitalize. Second chance opportunity, great rebound by David Grady to put it back up and in. Here's Williams to Lubin, Lubin drives right, gets inside, right hand, another layup. Lubin can't be stopped right now, he's feeling it. Two more points on the board for him. And Brockport's defense has to find a way to stop Lubin. He's feeling it right now. 13-point game. Cortland still in this one. There's Wallace in the right wing. Cortland back in man defense. Wallace goes right by his man, goes into him, and puts it up. It's too easy. Smaller defender on him. He goes right into the body and gets the layup to go. Wallace and Lubin just trading buckets at this point. Brockport into a 2-3 zone now. Here's Williams trying to find something, nothing there. Here's our Curry. Our Curry swing the other side. Williams tried to get it inside to Costin. He lost it, and it's a turnover. Here's it's a, Wallace. It's a costly turnover yeah. for Cortland at this time in the game. Arnold slows it down. They co up and play. Time is in their favor here. Here's Wallace. He pulls it back out with 12 to shoot. 
Jihadi Wallace with our Curry on him. Drives, loses it out of bounds. Off his knee, it's going to go the other way. Turnover for Brockport. Wallace did not like that call. We've got a stoppage here. I'm not sure what was called. It looks like we're going to. It's going to go to Cortland. It was their ball originally off the turnover, and they're just going to take it out. I'm not sure what the stoppage was, but got a inbound here for Cortland with 8:06 to play. Brockport currently in the lead, 50 to 35. Cortland needs buckets and they need it quick here, Zach. They cannot afford to fall too far behind. And still looking for Grunder to get going. Nice pass inside. Here's Lubin. Lubin, spin, pull up. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Costin. Back outside, Grunder. Open look. Can't get it to fall. Everybody's struggling, but they do get another offensive rebound. Here's our Curry. Our Curry dribbles it back out. A second chance opportunity, but another one. Grunder could not capitalize on a wide open look. Inside to Lubin. Lubin with a big on him. Inside to Costin. Nice feed. Goes up. No good. Gonna get a foul. Brockport can't believe it. Foul's gonna be called on Jihadi Wallace. That's gonna be his his third foul. And it's gonna send Aaron Costin to the line. Second chance opportunities helped Cortland on that possession. A couple of misses. You said a grunder. He's two for 11 in this one. Costin knocks it down, but yeah, he's definitely struggled. But like you said, got to credit Brockport's defense for that too because it's not just that he, that was an open look that he missed, but all of his other looks tonight have been tough shots that he just has just been good defense. Costin goes two for two from the line. And I talked about the double team with Colby Jordan as well as David Grady switching off on Costin as well as Grunder, and that's really been a great game plan for Brockport to get out to a 13-point lead. Here's Beckett. Beckett, step back. Tough mid-range. It's good. That's a professional level move from Makai Beckett. Gets to go. Nice bucket there. Pull up mid-range. What a play by Makai Beckett. Stone cold. And up to 15 is the lead. Here's Grunder. Trying to find a way to break down this 2-3 zone. Our Curry way outside here a good six feet behind the three-point line they got to try to get some penetration inside ten to shoot here's costin high low action grunder open deep three from top of the key there it is austin grunder gets his first three of the night to go that's a big time shot they're finally finding some good high low action to break down the zone and a good pass for Cortland to find a wide open grunder sinks the opportunity his first three of the game he could keep, get a couple more of those Cortlands easily back into this one. They got to get stops, though, Zach. That's how they're going to get back in this game. They need stops, and they haven't been able to get it. Here's Beckett dribbling in. Another tough shot. It's blocked away by Cam Williams. Pulls up again in his face. No good. It's rebounded by Lubin. Great defense there by Cam Williams. Grunder, pull up three. In and out. That would have been huge. But an offensive rebound, our Curry has it. Passes inside to Lubin. Second chance opportunity. Lubin dribbles, hands it off. That's Grunder, right-handed layup is good. That's a tough layup by Grunder. It's down to 10, and the Cortland fans and Max Zio are on their feet getting going. And I wouldn't be surprised. Greg Dunn's not calling a time, and he there finally does. Needed for Brockport here. Absolutely. Quick 5-0 burst here for Cortland. Brockport calls timeout with six minutes to play, and a 10-point game. As we mentioned, guys, the winner of this game will advance to the Suniac Championship game, which will be tomorrow night, 4 p.m. from this exact location. Facing, the winner of this game will face the winner of the number five ranked New Paltz and number one Oswego. Let's take a look at that game real quick. Oswego, 19 straight victories. Top 10 in the country right now as far as Division Three basketball goes. That's gonna be, They're going to be a tough team to beat. They definitely are. Oswego is key for the rest of their season is going to be focused on the defensive side. If they can get stops on a lot of possessions, there's really not a lot of teams that could stop them. Offensively, you don't really have to worry about it. There's so many playmakers for this Lakers team. Any guy can have a great night. They go about eight or nine guys deep, Oswego. 
all of those guys have an opportunity to have a big night. The focus is going to be defensively, and Coach Jason Leone talked a lot about that in the press conference a couple of days ago. Absolutely. One of these teams will have the opportunity to face either Oswego or if New Paltz can pull off the crazy upset tonight, we'll have that game for you live at 7.30. It's about a half hour following the conclusion of this game if it were to run a little bit long. So here we go. 5.59 to play. we got a 10-point game. Brockport has the ball and the lead, trying to hold off the recent run by Cortland. Inbounded into the backcourt is Tony Arnold. Arnold with our Curry on him. Cortland back in man defense. Arnold bringing a foul here. It's going to go against Lubin. He didn't like it. That's his third. He was trying to fend off Jihadi Wallace there. And it's going to be a one and one Cortland over the limit. Brockport in the bonus. They'll have free throws from here on out. Jahadi Wallace free throw is good. He'll get one more. That's a big free throw for Wallace. Definitely is, and, and try and stop this momentum that Cortland started. They still have to get some stops on the defensive side, get things going offensively. Wallace, second one in and out. So the door's open here for Cortland to try and cut it to less than 10 points. Here's Grunder. Grunder throws it out of bounds. A costly turnover. He thought Williams was going to keep going. Williams went for the back cut. Lost the ball out of bounds. It's a bad turnover there for Cortland. 13th turnover on the night for Cortland. Both teams with 13 turnovers. A big one there from Grunder. Here's Arnold. Arnold trying to find Wallace inside. Nice entry feed. It's actually deflected by Cam Williams. Good defense there despite a nice pass. It's going to stay with Brockport. Brockport looking to slow the game down. Don't let Cortland get back in this one. Slow tempo. Here's Wallace in the corner. Lubin defending. Finds Grady. Grady with Costin on him. One on one. Hands off. Arnold. Hesitation. Pull up. Mid range. Cold blooded shot. Tony Arnold. That's a nice shot there by Arnold. He's up to 10 points. 12 points, excuse me. He's their leading scorer. Behind, Jah behind Wallace, excuse me. It was a good screen by Wallace to get Arnold open on that play. Here's Grunder with, John, with Jordan all over him. Tough mid-range shot. Oh, that's tough. That is tough. Mid-range pull up. Can't really defend that. That's Austin Grunder right there. Perfect shot. Perfect move. And an 11-point game. Big possession here for Cortland. They need a stop and a score badly with under five minutes to go here's arnold step back hesitation driving inside finds his man that's wallace in the corner he drives right hand layup is good again lubin is not really standing any resistance against wallace right now wallace is just too big wallace going around our curry as well easy bucket at the rim here's williams Here's our Curry on the right wing. He drives right, drives inside. Nice pass. Costin layup is good. And the foul. That's going to go against Wallace. That's going to be his. Is that going to be his fourth? That is going to be his fourth foul. So that's a big one. Now one more and he's out. That could be huge. And Costin's going to the line with a chance for three. And, and could be a huge play in this game. You said it, Brian. A great pass by our Curry, though, to find cost in not a lot of options on that position for Cortland and our curry with a perfect pass down low to his big man monte johnson back into the game and that's while it's going to head to the bench here with those four fouls team still leading by double digits so coach dunn probably figures you know get him a little bit of a rest don't you don't want an early foul and if it gets close you put him back in down the stretch exactly 10-point game. Kostin knocks down the free throw. Here's Tony Arnold. Our Curry guarding him in the backcourt. Advances to Beckett. Makai Beckett, he's been great here in this second half. Finds Arnold. Arnold gets a ball screen from Wallace. Nice defense. Pull up. Mid-range. No good. Rebounded by Cam Williams. Doors open here for Cortland. Here's our Curry. He slows it down in the front court with Arnold on him. Driving. Left hand. Pull up, open, can't get it to go. That was a good look there for our Curry. Loose ball, fall four. 
What do we got? It's going to be out of bounds on uh, on Brockport. I think that was Mikai Beckett right there fighting for it on the ground. He just had his foot out of bounds. It's going to stay with Cortland. It's going to be a timeout. Yeah, a timeout here by Cortland with 3.47 to play. This is a huge possession out of this timeout. They need a bucket badly. Still, though, they're shooting 11.5% from three, Zach. Three of 26. That's going to be the story of the game if they end up losing it. It definitely is. Three for 26 from three-point range. It's definitely not going to help you win. And, and 47 points on the board when you put up those stats next to it definitely makes sense for Cortland. But Grunder's getting involved, 16 points. Costin down low, 13 points. And Lubin with 12 points. Their scorers are showing up. They just need to do it a little bit more as well as get stops on the defensive side in this last 347. That's it. I mean, they've generated some stops down the stretch in the last couple minutes. They just haven't been able to translate that directly into points. Again, only seven points off the Brockport's 13 turnovers. So that's a big story here. Coming out of timeout with 347 to play. But Colby Jordan back in the game face guarding Austin Grunder. That's the matchup that we've been looking for earlier. You saw they got into a little bit of a scuffle. Jordan with that technical foul awarded. Here it is right here with Grunder. Grunder, ball screen, pull up, mid-range. It's open, short. Costin with the rebound, and it's fall for it, and it's actually a foul on Tony Arnold here underneath. Another good look, though, for Grunder. He's getting to his spots here, and he's getting open looks. He's unable to knock it down, but we got big free throws here for Costin. It was a good move by Grunder. Had Arnold on him and got away with a little push-off, but was able to get it up and... Brockport did not do a good job boxing out Costin with Arnold on him down low. That's always going to be Cortland's ball, and he goes to the line. Yeah, that's Jahadi Wallace back into the game here for Brockport. So it was a little rest. Didn't want him to get another foul potentially early. But here's Costin at the line. First shot is good of the one and one, so he'll get another. Lead cut to nine points. A chance to cut it to eight, which is the lowest it's been in quite some time here if he can knock down this free throw. Free throw is good. Costin's up to 15 points. It's an eight-point game. Game on. Here's Colby Jordan. Cortland needs a stop. Three and a half to go. Here's Wallace, left wing. Grady, Grady calling for it. Doesn't get it. It's back out to Arnold. Arnold to Beckett. Here's Beckett. Gets a screen with the big on him. Pull up. Three. It's good, Makai Beckett, what a shot. That's a huge shot and a huge bucket from their leading scorer. And it gets the lead up to 11. What a shot by Makai Beckett. Here's our Curry. Does Cortland have an answer? In And it's stolen away. Oh, just barely deflected out of bounds. He almost got both hands to steal that ball. That was Tony Arnold coming from the backside again. We've seen that all night. Anytime Cortland has tried to get the ball into the post, Brockport has had a guy on the backside coming to double team. And Arnold's quick enough to get to that ball. That's double teaming Grunder on the inbound. Cortland's forced into a timeout. They couldn't get the ball inbound. That's costly, but they know how important these possessions are late here. Down 11, they need buckets. They need it quick. I would say they need threes, but they've just been ice cold from deep in this game. They really need their stars to step up. Grunder, Lubin, as well as Costin brought those guys up multiple times tonight. Those are the leading scorers, 16, 15, and 12, respectively. It's going to be down to those guys in this last 254. If they can make shots, Brockport's not doing too much on offense besides Makai Beckett, uh, and that's favoring Cortland right now. Yeah, Beckett up to 14 points. Wallace leads Brockport with 18. You think that fatigue starts to become a factor here for a guy like Grunder? I mean, obviously... You know, he's player of the conference last year. He's an all-star talent. 16 points, 11 rebounds, but he's played 37 minutes nearly every I think he might have played every minute of this game. You think fatigue is starting to set in here? It might be a little bit, but Grunder's the kind of guy that almost plays every minute of every game for Cortland. He's that important to this Red Dragon team. Here's the inbound to Williams. Williams drives, tries to dish it inside. It's deflected and stolen by Grady. That's a big turnover 
And that could be the nail in the coffin here. If Brock Fork, Brock Fork can get a bucket here, that could sink Cortland. Costly turnover. Here's Arnold. Arnold to Wallace. Wallace one-on-one -on -one with Lubin. Drives right. Fancy dribbles. Bazzi out to Jordan. Jordan drives up for the layup. Knocked away. Deflected and blocked by Grunder. Nice block and good defense. Here's Grunder. Pull up. Right wing three. It's short and it's rebounded by Wallace. Another solid look there. So unable to get it to go. And the three-point struggles for the entire Cortland team continue. And Brockport just going to slow it down here with just two minutes to go. Tried to commit a foul there, it seemed, and eventually it is called a late call there. Cam Williams there with the foul. Very late call. I'm Very late. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's going to send Tony Arnold to the line for the chance at the one and one. And Cortland needed to foul there. Just two minutes to go, obviously a 30 second shot clock. Yeah, they're just trying to extend the game at this point. But Arnold's free throw is off, rebounded by Grunder. Two minutes to play, Cortland's got to go. Here's Grunder, hands it off to Williams. Williams to Lubin, Lubin, top of the key three. No good, that hit one hit the left side of the backboard. And that could do it. It's been a unbelievably poor shooting night. Uncharacteristic for this Cortland team, who again, as we mentioned, shoots over 30% as a team. Just 10%, 3 of 28 tonight. It's been a rough one, and that's going to be the story of this one if they do, if the score stays the same. Yeah, and, and Cortland just not able to make shots today. 26% from the field, 10% from three point range against a team like Brockport that can put up points as well. It's not a recipe for success. Wallace's free throw is no good. Here's Grunder. Grunder hits Costin. Costin, Williams, corner three. No good again. And another rebound by Grady. Williams has struggled in this game. Only two points, 0 of 8 from three. As has the rest of his team. Cortland not fouling, at least not yet. 15 to shoot, double comes. Beckett dribbles out of it. And we're going to get a timeout here by Brockport with 15 to shoot as the double team came. You don't want to risk any turnovers here, so Coach Dunn figured, you know what, we'll call a timeout, get a nice play set. A bucket here could seal the deal. Yeah, this one's all but over. 11 points, Brockport with possession. They do get a bucket here. This one's all but done. But the story of the night, we've, we've said it multiple times. It's been Cortland shooting. Haven't done a good job uh, of getting the bucket or getting the ball in the rim. And that's the story right now. Brockport's defense has been very, very strong. That's going to be something that they're going to want to bring into the championship game. If their defense is this good, then it's looking good for them. Yeah, they could really cause some havoc for that team that they play, whether it is Oswego or New Paltz. If we're going off Oswego, they're the favorite to win that game later. The last time that Brockport played Oswego, you were there last week. It was a six-point game. You mentioned unbelievably tight game. Do you think that Brockport... If they play the way they did tonight, do you think they stand a chance to beat Oswego if they were to face off tomorrow? I believe so. I think Oswego would probably shoot a little bit better than, than Cortland has tonight. But, it, I mean, Brockport came into Max Zeal in December and beat Oswego State, one of Oswego State's two losses. They, they've shown they can win these type of games. Absolutely. Wallace is heading to the line. He's had an unbelievable second half. Got a double-double on the night, 18 points, 10 rebounds, 2 of 3 from the 3-point line. Only 50% from the free throw line, however. He's got a chance here at 2 free throws. First one hits back iron. It's no good. So the struggles at the line continue. Not that it should matter right now, but his second free throw is up and good. 19 points in the night for Jihadi Wallace. Here's Kareem Lubin. Here's Cam Williams. He drives. He falls down. We're going to get a foul 
Brockport bench cannot believe it. Didn't look like much there. Thought he might have slipped, but they do get called with the foul. Makai Beckett, Makai Beckett gets called for one. And Brockport needs to be careful. Nothing after the whistle. And try not to really get at the referees. They're up by 12, minute 15 to go. Yeah, could have got call that could have gone either way. But Cortland go to the line for two. Here's Cam Williams. As we mentioned, struggled tonight. Two points, one of nine from the field. He knocks down the free throw. And here's a guy, Cam, he averages 10 points per game. He's a 33% three-point shooter. Just another uncharacteristic night from him. Second free throw is also good. Full court pressure here for Cortland. Nice defense, it's deflected. And it's gonna go back, or it's gonna stay with Oswego, that is. Here's Kobe Jordan. He finds Wallace. Wallace spins out of a double team. Nice move to Kobe Jordan. Up, layup, and that is all but going to do it. Chuck down the court. Here's Grunder. 12-point lead. Lubin drives in. No foul. Layup is good. Pressure is still on, though. Cortland continues to do that full court press that we mentioned. But as long as Brockport takes care of business, business at the free throw line, it seems like that's going to pretty much do it. And Cortland really didn't do a good job in transition there. Brockport broke the press very easily. Cortland came down a good job by Kareem Lubin to get to the basket. They could have done that a tiny bit more tonight. It, it definitely could have helped them. Arnold knocks down his first free throw. That puts him up to 13 points. Also seven rebounds for him. You know, despite their season seemingly coming to an end, I do want to highlight Austin Grunder and how amazing of a season he's had. Averaging a double-double in contention for player of the year. And he, he gave it his all tonight. 16 points, 12 rebounds. Struggled from the field, but he was fighting through double teams and contact all night. Well, it could be Grunder's final game in college. It's been an unbelievable season for Grunder. Brockport controls. Here's Beckett. He's going to dribble it out with 20 to shoot, so he can't necessarily end the game on this possession, but Cortland has not has elected not to foul. Beck is going to dribble it out. The leading scorer for Brockport tonight, Jahadi Wallace, 19 points, 10 rebounds, the double-double. Tony Arnold also with 14 and 7. Makai Beckett with 14, and Grady also had 10 for Cortland, Grunder at 16, Lubin with 14, and Kostin with 15. Aside from that, they really did not have much. Brockport empties their bench along with Cortland. Oh, excuse me, now Cortland actually keeps their starters out there. But Brockport empties their bench. And that's going to do it here. From the Max Zeal Gymnasium, the final score of this one, Brockport 65, Cortland 53. And Brockport is headed to the championship game tomorrow night at 4 p.m. They're going to face off against the winner of New Paltz and Oswego coming up here in a little bit. And a great win for Brockport. Great defense by the Golden Eagles holding Cortland to only 53 points tonight. And it was a great all-around all game. The Stars stepped up, like you said, Brian, for Brockport tonight. And that's why they're in the championship tomorrow afternoon. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Make sure you guys do stay put for the upcoming Oswego New Post game. You won't want to miss it. That team is going to face off against Brockport. That game's tomorrow at 4 o'clock. In about a half hour, that's when the Oswego New Post game will tip. But stay tuned for the pregame show coming up. For Zach Malamud. I'm Brian DeMiro. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy the next game.